Hello everyone, welcome to Thursday for Knowledge. Today I will be continuing on with The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. The chapter I'll be covering is The Paradigms of Interdependence. This is an overview before we get into the next four habits, or yeah, next four habits. This is an overview, an overview about what they are, what they represent, and it's about interdependence. Now we're getting into our relationships with others. The first thing to understand, metaphorically, there is an emotional bank account with every single person that we have a relationship with. Every single one is, has its own emotional bank account. And they all have a balance that's fluctuating up and down, up and down, because when we interact, we're making deposits, and when we're, we're uh, or sorry, when we're interacting, we either, we are either, we are either, <laughs> I can't speak. Sorry, when we interact, we are either making deposits or withdrawals. Deposits means our actions and interactions are in, uh, increasing the quality of the relationship, and the withdrawal is it's actually decreasing the quality of it. The balance declines. How do we make these withdrawals? Well, there's six ways. Six ways. I don't even know. Six, <laughs> six ways. The first is to understand the individual. Not everyone has the same, what a, what a deposit for one person could be a withdrawal for another. Just think about it that way. It applies to your actions, your behaviors, what you speak, how, what you speak, what you speak, how you speak to them, um, what you say, the, the topic of conversation, etc. So if you're always going into a, an interaction, me, 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 I like this, I want to talk about this, I want to do this, I want to do that, la, 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 la and nothing to do with the other person, you're actually withdrawing from that emotional bank account because you did nothing to show that you cared about the other person. And that's what it is to be proactive. It means I'm going to take the action to grow this, this relationship by understanding the, the individual. I'm also going to do this, this is the second one now, by attending to the little things. It's, uh, this one's a little tricky, little tricky little things. Because it, the, it, it's things, they're little things, so we don't, th we overlook them essentially. But it could be things such as if you have children, if you're f constantly focusing on one child and you're, the other child, like you, oh, they're good. I know they're good. They're fine. No, they're not fine. Because obviously you're just focusing on this one and that child will notice. And that doesn't mean like you're always doing that, but like in individual circumstances, like let's say you go to somewhere. Uh, you take your children to watch a movie in the theaters. One's all one's older than the other usually, unless they're twins. But anyways, one's older than the other. The younger one needs more attention, like to care. Like you gotta help them, you gotta feed them, blah blah blah. The older one, you don't have to. You trust them that they're self sufficient. So you're show you're kind of like in your eyes. You're like, oh, I'm I'm showing like that he can be independent. But that doesn't mean you have to like coddle them or whatever. But just show them that you still are there for them. Right? Oh, is there, you know, you're helping the younger one, whatever, but the other one, hey, is there, you know, you gotta kind of balance. And that goes for everything. Your friends, uh, you know, if you just, you have a, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Just, if it's in a situation where there's multiple people, try to, you know, make sure everybody is valued, feels valued. And that's one example of how to attend to the little things. The third way is keep commitments. Straight up. This will have, I will have to make my own video about this one. But do not say you will do something if you have no intention of doing it, if you don't think you can do it, if uh, you, you don't think you can, if you think you can do it but you can't like fully do it, etc. Do not say, yes, I'll be there, count me in. Unless you can, because you are letting somebody down. And that is a huge withdrawal from an emotional bank account. If I need four people to carry, if I need four people to carry a piece of furniture, let's say, and myself and then three others, and all three said, yeah, count me in. And then one said, the one last minute, yeah, I can't, I can't make it. Now, the three, three will make this task impossible or extremely difficult. So what happened by that person not keeping their commitment? We all hate that person, right? 
they made a withdrawal from the bank account you, and they let us down. Okay, that's an example of keeping commitments. Their goals, their, it's the one self-explanatory, really. Number four, clarify expectations is a big one. Also probably should make a, its own video. Clarify expectations is don't think you want something and not say it. That applies to relationships of all kinds. Uh, I'll use an example that's semi-true. When I used to live with my parents, uh, my dad would always want me to take out the garbage on Thursdays. Now, he did tell me every Thursday. He used to tell me every Thursday. So this is where the, that, the semi-true comes in. Right? Now, let's pretend, and I used to never do it, but anyway... <laughs> That's because I was, I was, I'd never read this book before. <laughs> but anyways, I don't live there anymore. But now, and now he taught me, he doesn't realize, I have to do it myself. <laughs> but anyways, let's pretend he never told me every Thursday that he wants me to take out the garbage. Okay? Let's pretend he told me, that he never told me. Then Thursday comes around, Thursday night, Friday morning, and I didn't take out the garbage. But he never told me he wanted me to take out the garbage. Ever. But in his mind, he expects me to do it. Should it be, should it, is it fair if he's mad at me for not taking out the garbage if he had never told me in the first place? How can he expect me? He never clarified with me. I want you to take out the garbage every Thursday. Now, in reality, I knew from freaking Tuesday that he was going to start reminding me, <laughs> right? That's in the reality of this story. If you ever watch this video, I'm not trying to make up a story that's not true. But in this false scenario, if he had never told me every Thursday, I want you to take out the garbage, how can he get mad, mad at me every Friday if, if it's not done? Right? That is clarifying expectations in a nutshell. It goes way deeper than that, and I'll probably make another video for that. Now, five ties into number three. Number five ties into number three. This one is show personal in integrity. That is not the same as honesty, and it's not quite the same as keeping your commitments. Honesty is what you say is true. You're telling people the truth. Uh, integrity is fulfilling promises and fulfilling the expectations of those promises. So kind of three and four combined, that's integrity. On top of that, doing it with the best quality you could possibly do. That's your integrity. Finally, of these th five, uh, six, this is number six. If you make a withdrawal, you need to apologize sincerely. But know this, if you continue to make that withdrawal, even though you apologize, it just whittles Whittles it down, whittles the quality of that that with uh, apology to the point where now you're just making withdrawals by even apologizing because you shouldn't have made withdrawals in the fir first place. So if you're apologizing, it's not it shouldn't be about, oh, you got me, I'm sorry. It shouldn't be about that. It shouldn't be about because I just know I should. You should need you need to want to apologize. You need to want to um, uh, rectify that withdrawal that you made. Sometimes if you do it, uh, if you apologize sincerely for making withdrawal, especially in like a quick time frame, uh, you'll cancel out the withdrawal. Like you, it'll actually bring the balance back up because it's like, okay, I get it. We are all human, you know, things happen, right? We're not perfect. But if you're doing the same thing over and over again, and you're apologizing every single time, that apology is just, is just the period on the sentence of that. I did this and that's it. Like, I'm sorry. We're Canadian. I'm Canadian, and we we apologize for we apologize for breathing near other people. We have the we're so nice, but we have like the most emptiest like sorry 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 bump oh, oh sorry sorry somebody bumps into me I swear and I sometimes I'm, I'll just be like I'm sorry, and it's like I'm not sorry I'm not mad but it's like why am I even apologizing This person hit me. <laughs> sorry for being in your way, man. I like anyways off topic. Apologize sincerely when you make a withdrawal. And finally, the, the rule that makes this all come together is unconditional love. They use the golden rule from the Bible, from this, from that, karma, whatever you want to call it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That doesn't mean do unto others and expect them to do that for you. That means do unto others as you would like for them to do for you. Like how would you, be, how would you want someone to behave towards you? That's how you should be behaving towards them. Boom. That is the paradigms of interdependence. 
Love unconditionally is the rule of all this. If you don't have that, then none of this matters. Unconditionally means you don't expect anything in return. You're not doing this for an expectation. You don't get mad if they don't do what you ask them. Let's say you ask someone to do something and then you love them unconditionally. You don't get mad if they don't do it and you don't get happy that they did it because they did it for you. Unconditional love means you ha you truly, no matter what happens, the outcome, good or bad, you still love this person. You still care about this person. Meaning, you care about the relationship itself and not what they do and what all these little blah. Right? That is that. That is paradigms of interdependence. And it's huge because this is how we grow relationships with people. Thank you for watching. Let's keep growing together and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.